Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Sorry for the delay. Let's get underway here. Um, market conditions uh, getting a little bit of a pop here. Um, let's uh, go through kind of, and then we'll we'll drill down into some of the other perspectives of the market currently. Um, if uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to type those in. Uh, there's a there's a little question. Uh, a sidebar or something there. You can certainly add any questions in there that you want me to cover. Uh, if there's anything on uh, happening that you want to be able to discuss. Uh, Long-term market conditions, uh, bull market. We're still pulling back in that bull market. Let me grab my drawing tool and uh, we're we're at an area where we're just extremely oversold right now. That we're, we're kind of at a critical area where we have we're either going to bounce from here or I think we still could bounce from here and probably will. But whether or not we're going to sustain that bounce, that's that's the million dollar question right here. Uh, we have we are in uh, this overall uptrend. So again, top down approach. A top down approach is simply what is the market doing. We are we in an uh, are we in a downtrend or are we in an uptrend? We're currently in a downtrend in an uptrend. The bull the bull market is still intact because this is still the overall trend. You can see it this overall uptrend, and then we're just doing that right there, this little uptrend. So if we were in a downtrend and we were looking at this, and we would say, okay, we're in a downtrend, and then we're rallying from here. That's a downtrend with a rally. That that would be kind of a bullish scenario in a bear market. Right now we're in a bearish scenario in a bull market. Okay, so inside of this overall uptrend, and that's that's called a lot of different things. It's, it's, it's really called a counter trend or a correction or a consolidation or a pause or a, you know whatever you wanna call it or whatever CNBC calls it. It really doesn't matter because it's all the same thing. It's just, it's just relieving, taking some of the pressure off the overall uptrend. <clears throat> now this one is, this one is a, a is got a little bit more legs because, for example, in an, in an uptrend here, we've got something like this or an uptrend, and this is a little counter trend correction, uptrend, little counter trend, where this one is is really you know is really retracing a lot of the overall move currently. Um, in terms of the shorter term indicators, we are we've got momentum extreme to the downside. It was a little more extreme yesterday. We've got breadth extreme to the downside. And we have sentiment in that upper range still. This actually is a good setup for a bullish bounce right here. If we were to have, if we were to have sentiment all the way down here, that typically happens after a major bear market or some type of a major move lower. And we saw that 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 happened last year. So we're not in that scenario. We're not in a scenario where we've just completed some kind of a long drawn out bear market. We've had a decent uptrend this year, and now we're consolidating that. We're, we're moving into some seasonality here. November, December traditionally are, are good months. Uh, September, October traditionally are bad months. So we've also got some seasonality on our side and we've got some extremes to the downside, which are going to help us, I think. Sentiment, remember what happens at the edges. At the edges, when I say edges on this sentiment report, I'm talking about these edges, the green lines here, the red lines here versus versus the middle. The middle is where we're trending. We're either trending up or we're trending down. But when we're at these edges, these are significant areas because these are these are contrarian type perspectives. And that is, what is the major trend? Well, the major trend is down in the in the in the in the short term. But we're at the edge of that. We're at the extreme of that. So is the probability that there are going to be additional sellers coming into the market versus buyers coming back into the market which is which is the higher probability at the edges the higher probability is but is up at the, at the edges at the top the higher probability is down so we're at one of these edges where it feels horrendous it feels nasty it feels yucky it feels and that's and that's that's perfect so the longer you do this the more you're going to recognize the I don't know if any of you are Seinfeld fans, but you got to become opposite George. There's an episode where George does exactly opposite of everything he normally would do, and his life his life improves. So it's like if you feel like you should be doing, like you should be throwing in the towel and selling right here, 
that's probably as a reversal indicator the exact wrong time to be doing that now that being said if we were if we were escalating a bear market trend that certainly could happen as well we can continue to slide but typically when we're at one of these areas we're going to bounce back up if the trend is still lower we'll slide back down we'll bounce off of it again but let's look at the last let's look at the last few years of this indicator let's go 5 years on this indicator uh, and see what we end up looking at kind of how often we get into these areas well let's let's go three years that's a little bit tight okay so this has been an interesting one where we've had so let's go back this is 21 21 uh even into october of 22 so really the this was our our major low of last year about the same time last year we bounced off that low we bounced off this low. In this case, we've been bouncing, we bounced off this low and this low and this low, and these have been pretty significant bottoms, pretty significant sell-offs. And, but every single time that indicator is near that area, we get a bounce. Let's see if we get another one right here. We would want a little bit of confirmation with some other indicators as well. One of the ones that I love the most is buy-sell ratio. Buy-sell ratio now is, uh as of yesterday at 0.15 so we were at 0.10 jumped up to 0.15 we were 0.09 the other day so we're in that area where we're, we're wide everything is wide and that just is an unsustainable area to be now what one thing that we can get on this indicator is we can get divergence right here this this actually turned out to be divergence when the market actually made a new low right here but the buy sell ratio didn't. So you have price activity moving lower, but you had internals strengthening. You had the number of buys starting to increase um, and the number of sales decrease. That could happen here as well, where, and it kind of already has been happening, but not quite like this one, but we're seeing on S&P 500, we're seeing um, this low here, let me move this over off of signals and go just to candlesticks. We've had, we're working on another bullish day right here. And that's ex that's exactly what we would anticipate off of that level of extreme. So now, even as of today, we've bumped momentum back up into this sell zone. It doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that this downtrend is over. It just means that it was extended too far. And now we've, we've moved and now we're going to move back up. There's some resistance here now at 420. <coughs> and that, uh, so so there's some work to do for the market. We could see a nice little rally, run back up to these resistance areas, a pullback. Ideally what we'd want to see for a sustained move higher is some kind of a, you know, some kind of a move back here and then a pullback to create some kind of a support area and start to move back up again. It could happen fast, it could happen slow, uh, it could happen, um, you know, not at all. We could roll back over and continue to head lower, but we're starting in that in that right direction, starting to get a little bit of a relief rally, and that that pulls buyers back in as well. When you start to see an up day, all of a sudden you're you know it lifts your spirits a little bit, and people what 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 most people tend to do on a down day is just close their eyes and like oh, I'm not even gonna look today. I'm not even gonna open up my account. I don't even I don't even want to I don't even want to know what's happening right now. We we tend to do that versus trying to analyze what's happening. So once the once we see the markets back up again, oftentimes that uh, that'll pull additional momentum back into uh, into the market. But if we look at a one year time frame on S and P 500, I'm actually going to go out a little bit further here because this bottom is just outside of that one year now, and. <clears throat> Um, I struggle this time of year with a lot of chest issues, so I apologize for that. 50% uh, retracement. We're we're back up above 416 at 41770. We, if we can hold up above that 417 level, that's going to be positive for the market, and it, we could get a pretty quick trip back to 433. That would be ideal if we could see a big run, you know, maybe some smaller counter trends. But if we were to end up running all the way back up to this range, this 433 range, and hitting that resistance here and then getting a pullback, we could see another upside, something to that effect. That, that would be the most ideal situation is if we get a sharp bounce up and clear, you know, really clear through a lot of this overhead resistance. 
we have a bunch of over uh, under you know uh, support area right here this demand zone and we're starting to see that demand starting to happen here so uh the, a good thing for the markets right here but we do have some work to do on that we've got into uh, these indexes excuse me sectors let's look at the sector etfs that are everything is we've got a few that are new uptrends we'll see if we get a little bit more of a rally you can see on the day here we're getting a few that are moving pretty nicely real estate having a nice move uh on the day let's and that's that's really just gotten really 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 beat up look at the two year on real estate so the real estate sector uh, symbol on this is iyr which is an etf we're now short-term uptrend so when we start to see you know when we see everything bearish here's an example let me go back and part part of the use of the software is just to be visually simple and so sometimes people are like man this thing is just like almost like kindergarten looking well it's like that's exactly why i want it this way is i want it to be so simple just to visually see what's happening doesn't have to be all these flashy lines and charts and you know tickers and level level twos and all that thing the whole point of this is let's let the software help us tell the story of what's happening and sometimes visually that uh, that is helpful as well and so one of the things here on this trend everything's red everything's sell everything's down we obviously we, we we already know that okay but in in this case real estate getting a little bit of a bounce right here for um you know just dealing with the last two years of interest rates going higher real estate is starting to drop so all the way down and it's you know this is obviously our trend direction oh my point my point was um if i go to something that is not in an uptrend let's look at financials and see uh let me come off of that two-year chart uh, even financials is getting a short-term uptrend today as of today which is good so we're seeing well oftentimes you'll see major downtrends that are just everything's red and as it transitions and goes to yellow then we get yellow you know green or red and then red or green so so when it's stuck in the middle you get a big color change right here we want to see all green or we want to see all red now as it starts to transition we're going to start to see some of these color changes a little bit here we're getting now we've got a short-term trend up today that's good it's it, that's telling part of the story off in addition to our long-term perspective of markets being oversold internals are weak but but too weak to the point that you're going to start to see some demand short covering new buying starting to come back in again but uh again lots of work to do here on the overall sectors and some of the leading indices uh, we just don't have any there's you know they're really the, the dow jones composite the utilities is one that this has got a whole bunch right here in this hold range uh which means there could be a bunch that bump up into this buy zone here so let's take a look at some of these and see which ones may be leading P peg um and that actually so there we go so now when this closes tonight and everything updates that will update as well but this is an early indication now so you're getting utilities starting to break out uh, the, there's there's some shift there's some things starting to happen and move and those are some early indications of buy sell ratio starting to adjust more stocks starting to pop up having a really deeply oversold buy sell ratio here on s p 500 at 0.08 that's that's low uh it, it can go down lower but this is a pretty traditionally low area let's see of these 22 stocks which which are actually leading right here you've got microsoft you've got netflix you've got urban outfitters chipotle progressive insurance seagate which is um, uh, storage all state capital one you got some financials in here now you've got a few healthcare and some retailers dollar general kohl's and gap uh and urban outfitter so uh, an interesting you know an interesting mix of stocks right there these you know and these look uh, these are all the kind of stocks that are you would anticipate to be higher in in weaker economic conditions we'll see if they continue to sustain that moving higher here as well. So just a quick glance as we go through and start that process to say where are we at in this trend? We're deeply, we're extreme to the to the downside. Sentiment is also confirming that. Um, 
buy sell ratio, direction alerts, indexes, all of these indices are moving, all of these buy sell ratios on those are also low. Again, that's a part of that process of a quick analysis. What direction should I be focusing on currently? And then we can make some decisions from there. Um, let's look at bonds as well. Bonds is part of this story right now. And we have TLT. TLT is moving. This is one that we really want to see have a little bit of, of, of a holding pattern right here. And then ideally start to move this direction. It's really kind of stuck right here. It hasn't been doing a whole lot. We had one or two days early last week and it hasn't done a whole lot since then. And then the short-term bond, if we look at the SHY, the one to three year, we're gonna see, um, we're seeing a bit of a pop and a bit of a pullback. If we can see that close and stay up above that $81 range. We may get a shot at, uh, 81, 8133. Remember what this is doing. This is the short-term bond. I've mentioned this before and we'll, and we'll probably continue to mention it because it's something that I think a lot of people are watching and that is the bond yield curve. We're, we we want to see is we want to see these short yields, these short-term treasuries start to drop and we want to see these start to, to they may drop, but we want to see, to see them stay relatively high, but we want to see this end of the curve this lower, this lower end of the curve, we want to see it starting to drop pretty significantly. And, um, and SHY is one way to start to see that. If we look at SHY here, we can see that that is doing, that's, that, that is moving higher. We want to see this move higher because that means that the rates on SHY are dropping, which is ultimately what we want to see here as well. Okay, if we go out a little bit longer time frame on this, let's even go out a couple of years and say okay so here's where we were so as as shy is dropping yields are yields are going higher okay so we've kind of flattened out right here now for quite quite some time really the entire year we haven't seen short-term interest rates move much um, and they actually may be starting to bottom and you can see a little bit maybe a little bit of that trend line right there connecting those points starting to move if we could get a run here in short-term bonds, I think the market's going to like that. And it has been happening. It's happening kind of slowly, but it is happening. That's something that's significant to be watching as markets are starting to move. So that's kind of the that's kind of the perspective on market conditions. If we look at, let's look at some of the commodities. And we've been talking about gold. Gold is leading. It's got a 97 rank. It's had a big run here recently. It's probably going to pull back. If we go out to that one year time frame and see it bounced inside of that 50% 618 retracement of the trend, swing high, swing low, 50% retracement. It rallied really quickly. So that's a that's a quick move with almost no retracement. If we do get a retracement and it pulls back and watching to see if it holds at that 181 level on GLD, this is not the price of gold itself. This is the ETF GLD. Then it stays in the momentum zone. The above the 236 is momentum zone. And it's also up in this buy zone. So gold is gold is a place I think to ha certainly have some exposure. And uh, it traditionally has been a traditionally has been you know kind of a safety play. If stocks are moving lower or the economy is sketchy and things are a little bit scary, then gold is is uh, it has been known to be able to be a, an investment or a location to be able to hold some. Uh, some part of the portfolio. Uh, let's see if we have any other th considerations for um, for commodities. Oh, oil. Let's look at oil. Okay, oil is retracing, but it's had this big run in the last year. Let's even go to the last six months and see here where we're at. We held up above. You know, gold uh, oil retraced. We had the war uh, breakout around here. Now it's kind of been retracing some of that again. We'll see if we end up getting this counter trend move to where we get a retracement back into this level, this a deeper level, or if it starts to pause right here. But it's in a short-term downtrend, longer-term uptrend. That's our uptrend. This is our retracement of that trend and trying to find some support right here, which is starting to weaken. That also could, could be a good thing for the economy. That's kind of what we want to see is we want to see oil weaken. We want to see bonds rally. We want to see interest rates drop. 
we want to see i you know ideally we see uh, commodities come back down a little bit that's part of the inflation issue and if we can see that continue to retrace back down uh, markets may 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 want that we're right in the middle of earnings season as well and uh, i haven't been paying a lot of attention to earnings just like usual there you know some good ones and some bad ones let's look at a few stock ideas here for today cbay is um having a move that's kind of the leader of that group and uh, we're seeing as you see as you see stronger markets you're seeing more and more stocks in that new buy list three or three or four days ago i think there were maybe 15 or 20 tops okay now you're getting a bunch of these stocks that are above 70 remember that the set, settings here are two dollar stocks anything anything above 70 in rank and it's gone from a hold to a buy and it has average volume greater than 100,000. So they're relatively, you know, they're they're gonna be bigger companies for the most part. And you can see some of the names in there that have new buys, Microsoft, uh, Nerd Wallet. I saw a couple others down here, Rio Tinto, um, Capital One, Colgate Palmolive, not a real strong rank, but let's look at that chart and see what that chart looks like. Seeing, seeing a move here on Colgate. Consumer staples really got has really gotten beat up. It's starting to turn that corner again. That's interesting. Okay, again, it's just part of the story. What does it mean? I don't know. That's that's a that's a part of, you know, we can apply whatever we think it means um, to, to any stock. But when we start to see trends and we start to see things starting to turn, we're seeing retailers do do quite well. Uh, and now we're starting to see consumer staples also do well after having a pretty big run. Oil is going to oil has been doing well. That's going to continue to come back in a little bit on some of those stocks. But remember that a lot of these oil stocks, they're still really, really profitable if oil is still where it's at and if it maintains at that, that level. Uh, so some decent stocks in here to look through. Uh, we're seeing some medical stocks continue to to, to perform. That's a buyout. Um, Sky West, which is a transportation stock. I think I actually talked about this in my update this morning, uh, where we went to sectors and we go to the sector scan and we go over here to transportation and look to see which one. We know that the shippers are doing well, okay? Air freight, not so much. Airlines, not at all. So 21 in the sell side, you got two in the uptrend for airlines and one of those two is is uh, southwest let's look at these 21 and see where their chart patterns are if they're coming alive at all down um, trends are all down uh, and a lot of these some of these are international airlines as well let's look at delta yeah man that thing is just just uh, horrendous very very smooth trend though uh, great for momentum trades. When this thing does turn back up and we get a pattern that looks something like this, that's that's going to be the time to start to be interested. As of right now, not so much. But we also know that these extremes, when it starts to push this far away from that 236, it's got some room to at least rally and counter trim back up if it's going to continue to move over. That's That's the early stages or potential early stages. It just hasn't happened yet at all on Delta. Um, I don't I don't know how some of these airlines are even in business still. They just they're just so uh, they're just so volatile. I think they're all subsidized and <clears throat> Delta Airline. Anyway, that's uh, transportation. Some interesting interesting that Southwest is it Southwest uh, is the one that's moving higher or oh, SkyWest SkyWest. So that's kind of a regional airline. Uh, and but it's getting a big move here, a b bigger move uh, a couple of days ago. Let's go through a couple of others. Spotify up in the uh, not quite in the demand or in the momentum zone because this is a downtrend. That that trend is flipped. If we go out to one year, now we're up above that there. So even Spotify, I'm gonna go back to that six month time frame here. I had a request to talk a little bit more about the reversal pattern. I'm gonna do that on. Thursday a little bit more and talk about that because one of the things with the reversal strategy is to do it in an uptrend. You don't want to use the reversal strategy in a downtrend. So if I'm looking at 
buy sell ratio. I would want a buy sell ratio of one or higher, something like this. Then when stocks are moving, when stocks are moving up and they pull back and they find support and they start to move higher, they do that in uptrends. They rarely do that in a downtrend like now. So if it's sliding and finds support and moves up, it rolls back over. So let me show you just a quick example. So when we tick back over here, we just slide this slider bar over. We're, what we're doing is we're switching the settings to stocks that are downtrending now. They have a pattern like this. Now the blue is just to represent something different than red, just because I didn't want to have all of this red all the time. The green is saying, okay, we're in a, we're in a downtrend. If I were to flip this back, this would be a sell, right? But there are times in uptrending markets when you get an uptrend and a countertrend and it starts to find some support and you want to take a stab at the early entry. Okay, This is a great way to be able to do that as it's finding support. You have an ABC pattern. An ABC pattern is simply a, a countertrend. We call it an ABC pattern because it's typically three parts, A, B, and C. And that comes from an Elliott wave analysis. Elliott wave analysis is basically says that markets and stocks move in five waves up and three waves down. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. And it'll typically, the ABC will retrace to wave four. This actually is an interesting chart pattern because it's got it. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C and it comes back to the wave four. So this actually is a really nice looking bullish ABC pattern, and it still could hold at these levels, but uh, it, it would it would be an, a lot stronger pattern if we were in an uptrend, if the market were in an uptrend. It may still work because the market is beginning, or at least it's attempting an uptrend. It's probably why you see a little bit of a bounce right here on this stock today, okay? But the blue essentially is, if you're, is, is if you're buying in this zone, okay? And this may be a scenario where we're buying right at the zone and setting a stop loss, you know, at the at the next the next zone down, setting a stop loss at the low right here. And then once it turns, once it goes from green back to blue, now we've shifted from early entry to momentum, from early entry reversal entry to trend following. And, and once you hit that trend fall, and you'll notice this is sell or TS. Okay, it says sell or TS. TS is trailing stop. Okay, so trail your stop. What that means is as the, as the stock is moving higher and higher and higher, I can either sell it or I can move my stop loss, move my stop loss, move my stop loss. Bam, eventually I'm going to get stopped out that's a trailing stop so once i'm in that pattern and it's moving higher then i can adjust my stop loss i can i can use both of these together and often do because once it flips over to a momentum trade you go back here and it's going to be green and so you can track it a little bit differently but this is going to give you all of the scans on these stock patterns that are retracing okay so let's go to a one-year time frame on some of these and let's stick with the six month now you'll notice the scans also change you get new abc patterns so that's the top of the list new abc pattern here there's a new abc pattern here okay now sometimes this entry it'll start the green early so we still want to have a little bit of confirmation and one thing is how deep is the retracement where is the support area happening and is it is it showing me support? So if I were to look at this bar right here and I were to say, okay, it's in a buy zone. And let me go something like this. If I'm looking at this stock and I'm saying, okay, yep, it's got a, it's, it's green, it's in the buy zone, but there's no confirmation. And we're in a bearish, we're in a bearish condition. Uh, buy sell ratio is less than one, right? So I don't want to, I'm not interested in buying in because this, 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 okay, finally we get a little bit of a bounce, but is there any confirmation? Not much, one day, two days, reversal, back down again, okay, so once you get this, that, that's, that's part of the risk of the reversal, but you, now you're starting to see, this is a significant shift uh, back to a hold. In fact, I have a setting that I really like, and, I, and it's a scan, 
that I use, and it is buy to hold reversal. Okay, so this is going to look for stocks that have gone from buy back to hold within the reversal pattern. Okay, let me let, let's let's scan through some of those and see here buy to hold, and that's the top of the list. So, so now you can see retracement 50%, and now you are getting confirmation. Confirmation could be several things. Um, it could be a short-term trend up, or it above the prior day's body or the prior day's high. Okay, what I mean by that, if this is a red day, and this is a red day, and and this is a red day, and this is a red day, and this is a white day or gray day or green day, okay. These are all red. Now, now once it closes above the bar, a red bar, or it could even be, um, it could even be a a white bar, gray bar, like this one right here. So you're at the location. Okay, you're in. You're at a 50% retracement. You've got a big counter trend. Now you're no, now you're looking for confirmation. I want to see it bounce. Okay, and so this this setting of it moving from buy back to hold is a quick way for you to scan through those and get those. So be so this really so if I were to go back to signals you can see it moved from buy back to hold. It did here as well. But so now you have two things, three things really. You have an ABC counter trend, you have an uptrend, you have a buy zone retracement of 50%. 50% is a really common retracement and now it's also moved back. Now you have a confirmation of either two up days in a row or it's moved back to a hold. Okay, that could be enough for an early entry. These are great for, for directional option trades because uh, they're, they're relatively early in the trade. And by the time it moves two or three days, you've profited on the options and you're done and you're out. Okay, IRON, another example here, 50% retracement, counter trend, STRL, not, not a, I mean, that's not bad, but you get, you know, here you're not getting support off of a Fibonacci zone, but you are getting off the price activity. Um, and a little bit of confirmation. Okay, just a little bit of confirmation that had it, but let's skip through that one. GTC, it's a little bit deeper, but same story right there. Okay, so if you like these patterns, these are these are fantastic patterns in bull markets and uptrends, and they because they they oftentimes just blast out of this zone. These are a little bit too deep, a little bit too deep. Here's Adobe. So here's an example of a counter trend move. In fact, this is what I was talking about with all of the color mess. Okay, this is just, it's stuck in the middle, but, but is it early? Okay, is it early? This Is this about to, it's in an uptrend, which is good. Okay, and we can also see that here in the shorter term uptrend is because the FIB tool has snapped to the high and the low. It's retraced, it's at a 236 and it's bouncing. It gave a confirmation bar yesterday, which means it moved back to hold. So from a buy back to a hold, that, that's a little bit of confirmation at a Fibonacci retracement. And I like it because you can scan for it. You don't have to just sort through a ton of stocks and try and find one. It's going to give you, it's going to give you the list of stocks that are starting to move. Now, granted this, the scans are as of the close. So this is today. And this was as of uh, yesterday's close. MEC, a little bit too deep right there. Royal Caribbean, six one eight. We might see we might see Royal Caribbean and some in some uh, you know consumer discretionary leisure companies start to ignite right here as well. So again, that's a little too deep. What we're looking for is we're looking for stocks and uptrends, and I and ideally we can set the scan. I didn't mean to get into all this, but actually it's kind of fun. Uh, once we get into this, you can set the scan to. I only want, I don't, uh, I do have it. Long-term trend is up. So all of these that we're, that we're looking for, and there's 49 of them, these all have long-term trends up. So if I went out to a year, they're going to be uptrend. So I, I kind of want to see two, two levels. I want to see what the one year looks like and what the six month looks like. Cause that six month, I wouldn't want it in a downtrend like that. I would want it in an uptrend like this. Okay. So now you have a bounce off this 50%. Here, first confirmation bar was yesterday, up 2% today. 
you know, and again, five, that's a $5 move on a $230 stock, a directional option trade. You're up, that's five bucks, um, buying it at the open, you know, that's, that's a decent trade. That's a shorter term trade. So that's one of the ways to utilize this scan and use, utilize the reversal scan. Um, and, and again, sometimes if the colors get too busy, you just turn them off which I will sometimes do in this setting because I want to see the price activity. And we're, and ultimately what I want to see is I want to see this exact thing. I want to see an uptrend, a retracement of that uptrend inside of somewhere inside of this 5.0 or 6.18 zone. It, it doesn't matter. Now we're already there, you know, cause we're already, we're already looking. If we would have been looking at this here or here, or here, it's a different story, but we can also say we might be edging out of that, of that uh, buy sell ratio starting to move higher. Here's a biotech up 6%, early entry bouncing off of 618. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six days of support. That's significant support. That's buy, that's buy demand, right? Buyers, buyers stepping in. There's no more sellers happening right here. And now you've got the first day, which did give you confirmation. It closed slightly above that. And then bam, here you go today. Perfect timing as well. S&P 500 is not even not even close to giving us a, a hold, but there's going to be stocks. This is remember this is what makes up a market. A market is this stock and 500 others and 5,000 others just like it. It's it's they're all going to be slightly different, but if you get a you know a handful of stocks that are doing this, they're up six percent. That, that is the market. That, that, and so you're looking at one stock doing this. Imagine a whole bunch of them also doing that at the same time. Okay, so uh, this is a good set. This is a great setting for shorter term, shorter term trades or early entry into a new trade, ideally in an, in a, in an uptrend. Okay, ideally you have that uh, buy sell ratio above one, but, or I shouldn't say but, I should say or, it's starting to show you signs of a reversal like we're getting now. This, the setting here actually inverts it as well. So here you do have the buy sell ratio up in this direction. It's a little bit confusing. I would stick to the buy sell ratio on the other setting as being one, because when this starts to, to turn again, you can, um, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a positive thing. So in this case, we want to see this we want to see buys down here to be able to be buying into a reversal pattern strategy okay um let me switch back to here and I, i'm going to cover that a little bit more i may cover that on its own just a specific uh, a strategy for that so if for some reason you're looking at your portfolio and you're like uh my watch lists are blank or they're gone or they're named different or my portfolio is nothing where are my portfolios it's probably because your setting needs to shift okay and that and that'll it's it's two different settings and that's the difference one is looking for momentum okay one is looking for so here c bay would have been it would have started to show up in that reversal scans back here for early entry now it's showing up as momentum after the fact Okay, and they're two different strategies. One is not better than the other, but and they can actually be used together. But in this case, what we, what we want is now the stock has proven itself. It's proven that it's got some momentum. And that's what we want to focus on is once it's moving in that direction. But if I were if I were a trader that wanted to try and get in a little bit earlier at a completed ABC pattern, like this one here, bounce, rally, counter trend, some confirmation. These, these would be areas where I could start to do that and that reversal pattern would help me do that. I'm gonna end on that note. I appreciate everyone's time and effort today and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot, bye now.